T.O. please. Hey there, this is T.O. bringing you my sixth video in my Lathe Legacies series of Kerbal Space Program. And in this video, like I've been promising in my last couple of videos, I'm going to be completing three rescue contracts. One from a Kerbonaut that's currently at the space station and uh, two other contracts for Kerbonauts down on the surface of Lathe. So I'm trying to make these videos somewhat short, but so much detail and so many things to see so uh forgive me <laughs> this series is the videos are a little too long for you I, I would understand but here you see i'm finally using the passenger module of my medium cargo ssto so it's got some uh, external command seats and the kerbals can jump on in and the module itself has got rcs and um, batteries and whatnot and a probe core so it can dock itself with the SSTU, if, if needed, I can dock it empty, bring it down to the surface, and bring back three Kerbals. In this case, I'm going to bring down a couple Kerbals and swap them for Kerbals found on the surface. So, uh, this is the first time I use this module with this uh, with this vehicle, so uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to work out. And uh, hopefully, they can get in and out of the seats correctly. And they can survive re-entry and whatnot. I like to pretend, assume, that that cargo bay is uh, going to protect them from the harsh conditions of re-entry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I, I like that modular design and those command seats. Uh, they fit the best for the amount of Kerbinots that I wanted to, to, to accommodate in that space. So there you see some uh, some red and white stripes. Just ignore that. That's not the helmets of the Kerbinauts clipping through the top of the vehicle. So if I were to go back to the drawing board, I would lower that uh, those command seats slightly so that their uh, heads would not be sticking out through the top of the jet. But I'm going to go ahead and deorbit here. It's really nice having flight-capable vehicles so that my my landing zone and my uh, approach doesn't have to be perfect. I can throttle up those rapier engines and fly down and really pinpoint my landing. I really enjoy flying uh, aircraft on NKSP jets and whatnot. Lots and lots of fun. So I'm going to try to land relatively close to the refueling um, rover at the space station, the, the surface station of Lathe. And uh, I mentioned in my last video, if you guys have any ideas for naming this little area, this this station, drop a, drop a comment and uh, definitely heavily consider one of those ideas. I want to name it something so that I can stop uh, stuttering and, and thinking of what names to call it. So here's one of the uh, rovers that I had dropped off. I can use it to move Kerbinauts from one place to another more quickly. So I need to figure out how to get this Kerbinaut into the belly of that that vehicle. And I, I know the alligator clips do not function with the docking port on this, uh, this little loader that I had built. But the alligator clips function on their own. So, so there you see the docking port is not attached to the top alligator clip like it should be. Doesn't mean I can't still use it as a sort of an elevator. So get my SSTO refueled and then while that's happening I can um, I can experiment with that alligator clip trying to stand on top of it raising it and it'll it'll function as an elevator so originally my intention was to lower that entire passenger module out of the belly of the SSTO to the ground level but for whatever reason the uh, the docking port snapped to a different port during flight so having to uh, Make do with what I have. And in, an, in another video, I'll probably resend that little vehicle, that little loader. Um, and in that video, uh, I can I can show you for, for certain the docking port was attached correctly the first time. And uh, some, somewhere during the flight, it, it glitched, I think. So I like this uh, little ladder mechanism that I have on the refueling rover. My engineer can get... Oh, see, it had run out of battery charge, so I had to fall the rest of the way. But it can lower itself and, and raise itself for my engineer to get off and on. So I'm, I'm trying with the engineer to reposition that docking port. And um, I'm unable to. The mass 
probably exceeds it, but I'm also, I think it was also telling me that there's uh, parts attached to it, which is not true. There's nothing attached to the docking port. The attach docking port is attached to a, to a, a, a port, but nothing above it. So the engineer is not going to be able to move the docking port, but that's okay. Again, like I said, I can just use the alligator clips as a sort of an elevator. So there you see that little functionality. I'm just kind of showing it off. I really like that feature. So my engineer can get in and out of that. Uh, reloading or re refueling rover rather so there you see my <laughs> elevator worked so that's half a success not a complete waste of a of a loading rover and uh still need to refuel and get the other two or other one kerbal from my base into the sst i believe so fuel transfers pretty quick got lots of fuel in that rover and I, I tend to leave it functional so that it'll it'll fill itself up while I'm doing other missions and uh, again that's that's also why it's got an engineer on board she keeps it running nice and efficient you get a you get a efficiency bonus to uh, to the I don't think it's the drill I think it's the resource converter itself converts more resources per per minute or per hour if you have a higher level engineer on board so She's going to plant a flag, apparently, because she had not yet before, <laughs> and get back up on board. And then we'll we'll transfer. They said, like I said, I'm going to deploy my drills and refuel that that rover, and uh, time to go back up to to orbit. So I could have sworn there was two Kerbals on the surface that needed to be rescued, and. Uh, I think I only just loaded the one, so we'll see. Unless uh, I wasn't paying as well of attention. I got three helmets. Is it three helmets? Yeah, but I only one. I thought I only unloaded one Kerbal. Anyway, we'll see when we get it back up to the uh, the space station. I've got uh, all three Kerbals in orbit by the end of this mission, and uh, I'm gonna send them all back to Kerbin. Uh, again, I, I record the video when I can, when I'm playing. I could be playing late at night next to my. My, my kids or my wife or the dogs and the cat or whatever. It's not a great time to record audio. So it's been a while since I've recorded this. But I guarantee you, all three of the Kerbals end up in orbit. And um, they all get sent back to Kerbin to complete the missions. But this is also a, uh, the purpose of this video. Not just to show, you, show me rescuing all three of them. But to show you the features of this SST. I really enjoyed um, using the different modules. And... Uh, Although you can see helmets through the top of the the, <laughs> the cargo bay there, I consider this a successful design for the most part. I would probably tweak it a little, but I like it. In uh, future videos, I'll show you all, show you show off, show you all off some different modules. There's uh, two cargo modules for it, and then the one science module. But uh, yeah, let's get this get this lady docked with the station. Trying to get it level before I use the uh, the nav ball to, to line up. And um, one issue I had was with that part clipping, leaving the um, leaving the external command seats caused the Kerbals to fly around, and one of them went poof. So I reverted the save and um, decided to undock the entire passenger module from the belly of the SSTO. So that's what you see me doing here. I'll just dock this thing right next to the SSTO and I can leave the external command seats now with no issue. So <clears throat> let's get all three of my soon to be rescued Kerbals into that inner planetary vehicle. I think I might have said interstellar vehicle in some of the previous videos, but we're not going interstellar. KSP-1 cannot do such things. So we'll be going interplanetary. With this, uh, with this one vehicle here up on the top of the uh, station, you can see it. It's got a nice, efficient nuclear engine, four fuel tanks, lots of fuel, so it'll have lots of range. Won't have a whole lot of thrust to weight, but it'll have lots and lots of range. So definitely get back to Kerbin. I can force a rendezvous with Kerbin if I need to, which I typically do, leaving uh, Lathe and especially leaving Elu and some of those. Outer planets, um, they can be challenging to pinpoint your rendezvous back with Kerbin. So 
because the uh, the margin of error is so narrow. So having lots of fuel means you can you can you can force rendezvous sometimes. So got all three of my Kerbals transferred. Go ahead and put out my solar panels before I forget, which is not that big a deal. When you've got Kerbinots on board, you can always do an EVA, open solar panels, open antennas, and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and <clears throat> deorbit lathe, get back in orbit of Joule so that I can use my maneuver node planner, which and I've got lots of footage already recorded, but I think I'm going to try in future video recordings. To, to not use the maneuver node planner like I used to. It's not a it's not an original feature of KSP, so when I learned to, to, to play, I had to do all the maneuvering myself, and I kind of miss it. So watching some videos of other YouTube creators, they don't all use maneuver node planner, and uh, I kind of think I'll stop using it in the future here. So for some more videos, you guys will see me using it, but uh, I'll stop using it. And, and there, I did not use it, and I <laughs> manually found a... Uh, rendezvous with Kerbin. So there you can see this long, long burn, very efficient, slow nuclear engine. And um got to pinpoint my approach with Kerbin and complete my mission. That's it for my rescue. Hope you guys enjoyed the, the video and hope to, to see you again as I explore lathe some more and do some slightly different, more interesting missions in the, in the near future.